So this is the dry um, signal. Uh, and what I, what I do now is I, again, select the profile. For the reverb, the, the list of profiles is the smallest for other plugins uh, because it's always, it's really a bit difficult to define profiles um, for the reverb. That's why universal in this case is most of the time quite good. But if you have specifics like um, vocals or keys or guitar, um, yeah, you can you can adapt the processing. And in this case, I have vocals, so I select the vocal profile. Can you play the um, uh, dry signal just one more time, just so we can get a... Yeah, sure. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and now I, I mean, it, it's already learned, but I, I, I can learn it again. You will already hear the reverb, so nothing is changing too much, probably, but same logic. I hit learn. The, the plugin listens to the to the signal. And in this case, it doesn't set, and this is also really important, um, for the, uh, most people think that the reverb time is set by Smart Limit, but it's not actually true. Um, but what Smart Reverb does, it finds the right reverb base for this kind of track. So it looks at the track, it looks at the specifics of the track. For example, also the spectral distribution energies in different um, regions and make sure that the reverb that's computed fits the track. That's what, what, um, what Smart Reverb does. It doesn't select the reverb time for you because um, the reverb time is extremely dependent, obviously, on what goal you want to achieve with the plugin. So in this case, the, the classical reverb parameters can be set by yourself, and the plugin selects more or less a nice pre-selection of, of spaces that you can later browse through. So I, I can show you that. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out. No more empty rooms. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out. And uh, so now this is the this is the initial reverb that's um, that's computed. And now I can, depending on my on my um, taste, I can select if it should sound natural or more artificial or intimate or rich. And I can easily kind of fade between these settings by just moving um, uh, this slider here, as I can show you. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out. No more empty rooms. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out. No more empty rooms. Which. So the reverb time always remains the same, but the character of the reverb totally changes. Um, and the idea is, because you can see if, I, if I'm browsing through this reverb space, a lot of parameters are changing on the, on the right-hand side. And the idea is that you typically select a reverb that, that, that sounds quite good for you. And then if you want to further fine-tune it, you have um, a lot of different options to tweak the reverb. On the one at the reverb time, but okay, let's let's keep that set as is. Um, but you can also define the the decay curve. So this means how does the reverb evolve over time, the reverb energy. So I can show you what's happening if I play around with this. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out. No more empty rooms. That's what's so giving us almost... like the like where it's coming back in a second time almost. Exactly. So it's it's almost like an echo effect because it, it, it fades down and then it comes back. I can always reactivate the original one. Um, so the decay curve is a, a thing where you can get very creative when, when it comes to shaping the reverb. Um, another thing is the, the spread. The spread means how wide the reverb sounds over time, so like high, how quickly it becomes wide. So if I set it to a very high value right from the beginning, it will be a right, quite broad reverb. And if I uh, reduce the spread, it will be more a, of, a, of a narrow reverb. Uh, and I can uh, set a limit for the spread. So because I probably don't want the, the, the low end to gain initial width, because normally I want the low end to be quite narrow. So I can kind of set a cutoff frequency and only things above this frequency are applied. Uh, only spread. Spread is only applied to uh, signals uh, above this frequency. Which is coming soon. Find an hour out, no more empty rooms, which is coming soon. Find is here like now it's almost like a mono reverb. So, um, so you cannot only say how wide it is, but also how it evolves over time. And the last thing is the density, and the density defines more or less how quickly 
the reverb becomes diffuse. Because if you have a reverb in a room, you initially have discrete reflections, like the, the first reflections. Uh, and you can also hear them as, as uh, distinct reflections. And at some point, the first reflections or early, early reflections, they, they cross over to a diffuse sound, you know, when everything is kind of, as a, when, the, when there are no discrete reflections um, perceivable anymore. And by controlling the density, you can either make it diffuse right from the beginning. And by the way, you can also see the impact in the, in the display above yeah, there. Yeah, so cool. Or you can, you, can, you can leave it very sparse. So for, in this case, it would, it would, there would be kind of discrete reflections until the end. So it would never become really diffuse. It's a bit subtle sometimes, but it's interesting to play around with this. Which is coming soon, finding our way out. No more empty rooms. Which is coming soon. Finding our way out. So I think you get you get an idea of it. So the thing with a smart reverb is it's an extremely versatile reverb, but we saw that a lot of people are a bit overwhelmed by what's possible to do. <laughs> so so my recommendation is start with kind of learn a reverb space, find your your style and, and normally since the, the 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 space really covers a lot of different styles there should be a style in there that, that that works for you and then you can probably if you want to fine tune a bit um but make sure you don't get lost because that's the problem that you may have that if you start tweaking around here that you you know uh it's fun but at some point you may get lost so um that's why you have like the revert to learned profile button right exactly so that's the reason when if you if you're totally lost somehow you just <laughs> click on the button again and then you're back to to what you did um and one thing you can there's also you can you can filter the reverb so it's just a small eq where you can filter the reverb uh, and if you want to go become really detailed you can even uh modify the spectral evolvement like the spectral decay of the reverb so you can imagine that this curve is Kind of replicated here but in different bands and by doing so i could for example make the the mids uh, fade out slower than the the low end and the and the highs so which is coming soon finding our way out no more empty rooms so it's it's something you can you can play around with um quite a lot but um altogether the the nice thing with um, smart reverb is that normally reverb, like finding a reverb is often like browsing through literally hundreds of, of, of room presets. Uh, and we thought, okay, how could we make that easier? And the solution for us was, okay, to, to kind of select the right rooms or kind of pre-select the right rooms, distribute them on this grid, and then you can just browse through this grid. So that's, that's the core idea of, of this tool. 